Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So, in this video today, I'll be going over two different figure festivals. One kind of on the not safe for work side, and one of course, you know, safe for work figures, your you know traditional anime and manga figures. Um, but yeah, so I saw these like announcements and, you know, I want of course do a video on them showing off my personal favorites and highlights from these figure festivals. So yeah, I made two separate like my figure collection lists for these specific events, so I'll link those in the description below if you guys want to check them out after this video. So the first list I made was the 5th Native Joint Exhibition Group, so again, native binding figures, not safe for work figures. Thankfully, the pictures that they have on here, they are censored, you know, they, you know, censor blocked some of them. And then the other sort of figure festival that was announced was the Mega Hobby Expo 2023. It's showtime. So this one kind of came out of the blue. Um, I didn't see any announcements for it, like when, you know, they were going to like drop this figure festival. So, you know, I follow Riverberries on Twitter and all of a sudden I just saw them like retweeting all this stuff. And I was like, wait, you know, I wasn't ready for this yet. But, you know, I quickly looked through like what they had and, you know, I organized them into a list. Again, I'm using Riverberries as like my source for, you know, what figures were announced at the, uh, this figure festival. So any figures on there, like in their like categorized lists, um, you know, I put them on um, the list that I made on my figure collection. So again, you know, if you guys want to check any of these two lists out, they'll be li linked in the description below this video. So yeah, I do have also a, you know, kind of short announcement at the end of this video, so, you know, um, you know, kind of important, like, life update, and it's gonna affect my YouTube upload schedule, so, you know, stick around for that if you do, like, watching my content, um, you know, it's gonna change when I upload videos, but without further ado, we're going to get started with the 5th Native Joint Excavation Group Figure Festival. So we're starting off with the 5th Native Joint Excavation Group, and I really only have 5 items from this figure festival. Now, you know, there were a lot of nice figures shown off, but I feel like these ones specifically just grabbed my attention the most, and some of them I talked about in the past, and obviously there was some very, like, lewd, looter looking ones that, you know, I just want to skip over because, you know, I don't know how YouTube is going to be with those, but, you know, I picked kind of like maybe the safest ones, I guess, but um, we'll start off with this one right here, which is the only binding figure I have, which is the Minamiguchi Hinatsu, and I overall really, really like her design. I like the sort of like colored hair underneath with the blue. Um, again, I have like the Queen Bee honey figure which has the same sort of like you know color under the hair i hope that does look good and nice and clean in the future when this does go up for pre-order i like the bunny ears overall i think it's very cute and you know the pose you know it's pretty like you know sexy pose i've seen other binding figures like this and yeah like you know pretty like you know on the like safer work side nothing too super revealing or anything and yeah i really just like her vibe overall um trying to look at the shoes a little bit maybe those are maybe my least favorite part of this figure again with finding figures like you know i try and find like what design aspects i like about them and i feel like if there's like more like dislikes to likes then you know i won't pre-order it um but this one for the most part i really like like pretty much like up to her feet at least again you know maybe when they do open pre-orders for her um i'll take a look at her again and also it'll depend on the price because binding figures are now getting you know in that you know 38 to 40k yen range so we'll have to see how this goes but i'm liking what i see with this character so far after that we have a sexy male figure or at least the you know art for, which is the Toga Inu no Chi Akira by Native, so it's definitely a very grabby figure. Um, I don't know what this character is from, I might put, you know, a little box saying what exactly, you know, this character is from, but yeah, um, it's, <laughs> I feel like it's, it's just nice to see, like, more, you know, sexy male anime characters because there's really not a lot out there. 
and I think he looks fine as hell. So interested to see how this one looks as a prototype. Next one is one figure that has been, I feel like, in development hell for like forever, and that is the painted version of the Nure China by Native and Rocket Boy. Um, <laughs> so I will probably just like keep this image up. Again, it is, you know, censored. I might censor it a bit more, but you know, as I talk about this figure, I'll put some pictures on the side because I do have like my not safe for work thing on my figure collection and there's really only a select few pictures I can show because if I go to the pictures section there's like you know they're out <laughs> so it's not censored like this um, but I really do love the way she she looks again um, the original illustration is by Mataro I believe and I just really love this character design overall and of course kind of has a sakura theme to it with just her sleeves having cherry blossoms and she's got this cherry blossom tree in the background and you know so far I'm, I'm really liking her um i don't know how i feel about pre-ordering her like in the future just because you know she's been in development hell for like forever um also i am wondering if they are going to provide like safer work parts because that's what's shown in the illustration um but with the prototype, they didn't really show any like safe work parts, so you know they probably will. They just haven't shown it off, but I really do like what I see. But yeah, you know, I'll see when she goes up her price and release date. Next up, <laughs> another sexy lewd male figure. It's the slow damage Toa by Native. And oh boy, okay, um, this one I might have to censor, you know, it a bit more, but. Yeah, I believe this was, you know, like a artwork and then they turned into a figure. And the one thing for me, at least, I'm not a fan of is toilet figures. So figures with like urinals or toilets, they're not my cup of tea. Um, I do like Toa's character design and um, I feel like with this one, you know, if you wanted to, you could find like a replacement for the toilet if you don't want to display him with it. Um, but I feel like for me, this honestly, even like if he didn't come with the toilet, um, I'd still skip him. Um, I'm looking around for like a figure of him. I mean, who knows when this is like, you know, painted and stuff. I'll, s I'll see how it goes. I might make an exception for him. But the, um, Alpha Max is also making one, I believe. And, you know, that one's a little bit more on the bloody side. But yeah. But at least we get to see his prototype. Um, sculpt looks great overall. His hair sculpt looks great. Um, I'll show you know pictures of his face on the side. But yeah, um, again, just nice to get like some you know much more looter male figures. And then the last figure I'm going to be talking about, which was a prototype in a previous like figure festival, uh, this is the Sakuraya Mahiru uh, Anniversary Live figure by Native and Rocket Boy. So again, they're out, but um, you know, I'm interested to see if there's going to be like any safe for work parts for this figure because I really like how like the colors on her. I think the colors are a big highlight for me for this figure. Um, design is gorgeous overall and you know, simple base, but you know, I'm hoping it doesn't take up, you know, too much room overall. Um, it is kind of placed a little bit weird, like where she's placed compared to the base. That She's not like smack dab in the middle, she's off to the side a little bit. But overall, the color work on this one looks absolutely impressive. So again, um, for how tall that they said this was. Okay, she doesn't have a scale yet, but overall, what I'm seeing from this one, I'm, you know, quite impressed with the coloring and, you know, Interested to see the price tag for this one and how tall she is. So yes, that was a pretty short list and you know again These were pretty much like my favorites that I saw that really caught my eyes. So yes, that concludes that list So now we're going to be moving on to the Mega Hobby Expo 2023. It's showtime So now we're moving on to the Mega Hobby Expo 2023 and I have 22 items from this list and all I can say is that there's a whole bunch of altar figures on here because they stole the show for me for this uh, figure festival. And you know, for one series in particular that I've been really getting into, they had a whole bunch of announcements for, so I'm excited to talk about those. 
And this is, of course, the Fate series. I've been really getting into the series. I've been playing a lot of FGO. I recently finished Fate Apocrypha, and I just jumped into Fate Zero. So yes, I'm diving into the Fate rabbit hole because I do really love the character designs and such. And like, they have so many impressive figures. And we're going to start off with this one, which is the Fate Grand Order Arcoid Brunstead Moon Cancer Archetype Earth. Final Ascension version. It's a mouthful. So she's supposed to be from Sugehime, but you know, she is a summonable servant in FGO and very grandiose and elegant design overall. Um, there's definitely a lot going on with this figure and it's definitely going to be like, I'm guessing 300k plus yen and that's being generous, I feel. Um, maybe 35k. Um, and I'm curious how Ultra is going to execute this, um, if they're just going to do it based off this original artwork, or they're going to, like, you know, give her a pose. Because while, you know, some of these FGO, like, you know, they show the concept, or they show that they announced that they're going to do this character, and they show this default artwork, you know, they're going to give them a, a cool pose, you know, to make them more appealing. So I'm interested in what they're going to do for her, especially because, you know, it's definitely a figure with a lot you know, to her, and, you know, it might be difficult to get a nice proper pose with, you know, good stability at the end of the day, but yes, it's a gorgeous character design, um, and I'm interested to see what Alter does in terms of posing and such. So the next one we have right here is a male fate character, which is the Arjuna Archer uh, by Altair, which is Alter's male figure line. And again, if it doesn't list the Ascension, I'm going to put it up on the side. But I really like his outfit design overall, and, you know, interested to see what kind of cool pose they do for him. So yes, it's nice that we're getting more male fate figure announcements. The next one is an Azure Lane figure. I just really like this character design, and that is Musashi. Um, I think I just like the outfit design overall. It's definitely very massive. Again, I feel like so many of these figures that I've seen from, like, Alter are pretty grand. And this one is no exception. Um, I'm not too sure if she's supposed to be like a fox or a cat or something. But, and this is kind of like a sort of rough sketch of maybe what they're going to go for. But, you know, character design wise I do quite like. So I'm interested to see how that's going to look as a figure. Going back to Fate, we have the Sei Shonagon Berserker by Alter. I believe this is supposed to be her summer version if I'm not mistaken. But I do kind of like these streetwear sort of, yeah, summery vibes overall. I really do like, say, Shona Gon's character design. Um, I know Fat Company has her, I believe it's Archer version, which I don't think they have up for pre-order yet. Um, but I do like the vibe of this one overall. So yes, I'm curious about how they're going to pose her and such, or they'll just keep this default um, pose. Because I think it's, you know, for being like this just kind of pose, I think it's not too bad. But we'll see how creative Alter can be with that. Next, we have another Fate figure, the um, Morgan Le Fay Berserker Final Ascension version. Um, I really do like the color scheme for this character overall. Um, I'm not too familiar with her in FGO, um, but you know I love the blue and the black. I like her just outfit design and the giant wand, axe, again I'm not exactly sure what that is, and you know she's kind of like another saber face kind of character, but yeah. Um, again, interested to see what Alter is going to do for the pose for the figure. And after that we have a figure by Kotobukiya, so we're slowing down an Alter a bit and we're jumping into um, the Cho Tante Jikenbo Raincoat Shinigami-chan 17th by Kotobukiya. So, I believe this is by the same people who made Danganronpa, and I think it might be kind of a spiritual successor to the series. But, I really love just the, you know, the pose for this figure. It's very, like, you know, lively, it's fun. I really do like that. And I do think she has a very nice character design overall. I believe it's kind of like a like, she's got, like, a purple and black color scheme, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Kind of looks like this. Well, maybe not so much purple. It's, like, pink and black. Um, but yeah. The one thing, though, is that I saw with her Nanjori, she comes with a scythe, but this figure, 
um, does not unfortunately but you know I would have considered uh, pre-ordering this maybe if she had the scythe I think it would have been fun um, but they probably would have had to change the pose up for her to hold the scythe but overall I just really love the pose um, it's not an artifacts J so it's probably gonna be on the much more expensive side compared to those figures but I do quite like what I see and the other thing I think about is the support because she's really only leaning on that back part of her outfit um, so I'm interested to see how that's going to last in the long run, but overall, really love the pose. i um, not too familiar with the character, but I thought I'd give it a shout out. Next up, we have another Fate figure, which is the Fate Grand Order John Alter 1 7th Avenger by Alter. And I feel like this one's a little bit weird, and it's mostly because we do have um, another John Alter figure by Alter, where she's kind of just like, you know, standing up. And she's got the flag behind her, I believe. Uh, but this one, she's kind of just like sitting down. And I was like, okay, is this based off an artwork or something? And, I mean, sculpt-wise, I think she looks super duper nice overall. But um, this isn't something I really want to pre-order. I think, you know, I'd rather get the standing up one by Alter, their previous figure of her. Um, but yeah, um... <laughs> So, like, I've seen people comment, like, what this is based on, and I've seen people say it's based off their, f like, fourth ascension, like, that full art. I'll probably put it on the side. Um, you know, because they're also kind of sitting in that illustration. Um, it is her with her long hair. And I feel like what they kind of did with this and another figure that they announced from Fate, um, is that they kind of extended, like, the dress part of them. Because they were shorter beforehand, but I guess they just extended it out a little bit more. Um... So yeah, probably to kind of protect the hair, like her long hair, for instance. Um, but again, this I really do like the sculpt. I like what I see. But I'd rather, again, get the original one of John Alter. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see that one colored. And the other one is the same kind of like sort of style, which is the uh, Altria Pendragon 1 7 Saber Alter. Um, so same kind of vibe. She's just kind of like, you know, again, sitting. And again, I'll probably put the 4th Ascension art on the side. And that one, you can definitely tell she had a much, like, shorter dress, um, compared to, like, this, where it's like, they gave her more, um, of a longer dress. Uh, but it is kind of just the same style, overall. <laughs> and kind of interesting how they have, like, Excalibur, but it's kind of like, I guess it's supposed to have meant to be like stuck in the ground, so that's why you're only seeing like part of it. Uh, but yeah, again, I think the sculpt work is fantastic overall, but you know, it's kind of like again, a sitting down figure in a way, and I think I would have rather, you know, get the third ascension version of her like standing up. You know, it's a pretty popular altar figure. And I think it's not too expensive aftermarket-wise, so I think I'd rather get that than the sitting figures because, again, you know, because they're sitting, their dresses are splayed out, it's going to take up much more space, so I'd rather go for the standing up figures of these two. After that, we're moving on to this grand figure, which is, again, Fate Grand Order, <laughs> Abigail Williams 1 7 Foreigner summer, uh, summer Version by Alter. So yes. This is super duper detailed. Um, she's kind of on the younger side, you know, just be warned. I'll put also a picture of the, you know, Ascension and, you know, the colored version of what this looks like. This is, like, so extremely detailed, and I believe this is the first Ascension of this character, which, honestly, I would have thought it would have been the third Ascension, but there's just, like, so much detail going on in this one. Um, you've got kind of, like, this, you know, eldritch like tentacle stuff i believe like she kind of has like sort of like an eldritch like horror theme to her abigail williams um but i'm impressed again the sculpt looks excellent very interested to see this one colored um yeah there's this one and i believe someone else i think it's aniplex is doing like the third ascension version of abigail williams summer version that one has such a different vibe to it. Um, I'm surprised that one isn't the first Ascension. But yeah, if I honestly had to pick, I honestly, I think I kind of like the vibes of the first Ascension a lot more. 
but yeah, interested to see the coloring on that one. Next up, we're moving on to, like, I think the only Aniplex figure I have, which is the Tokito Muichiro, uh, 1 8th by Aniplex, aka my son. <laughs> I love Muichiro. Um, but yeah, I do like this one a lot more compared to the um, Kotobukiya one that I believe went up for pre-order. I just like how this one comes with, of course, these smoke effect parts. I feel like what's kind of lacking in the Kotobukiya one is, you know, they could have added some, like, smokiness, like, smoke effect parts onto the base, like they did with the Kyojuro Rengoku Kotobukiya Artifacts J figure. I like the flames on that, you know, it's an actual little detail that I like for such, you know, a cheaper figure. And I feel like this one, you know, definitely, you know, went all out with the smoke on here. I do like his hair sculpt overall. The coloring on that looks fantastic. Um, probably not going to pick him up though, just because I believe these guys, like Demon Slayer Aniplex figures, they do tend to go down in the aftermarket. But, you know, sculpt, pose wise, extra effect parts, I think he looks nice overall. So before I get into the next figure, um, I did add two to my list because I completely forgot about them. So I'm going to jump back a little bit and talk about this one that recently went up for pre-order that I already pre-ordered because, you know, it's a cheap figure and she's absolutely adorable. And that is the Uchi no Neko ga Ononoko de Kawaii Kinako uh, Oki Gai Collection Palette Present by, it should say it's by Golden Head on Ami Ami, but it says it's by like Alice Glint and Thousand. So yes, another super cute Kinako figure overall. Um, so yeah, here she kind of looks like via photograph and I think she's absolutely adorable. I don't know if it's going to come with the present box or if it's just, you know, meant to be a display. I mean from these, um, yeah, maybe from these um, pre-order pictures that she does come with one, which I think is absolutely adorable. And yeah, I think so far, you know, it looks like the character and it's super cute. I do admit though that the fang on her face looks pretty prominent and big. I wish maybe that was a little bit smaller. But yeah, it's a cheaper figure, so that's why I decided to just drop the ball on it. So, you know, I do again have the um, tiger outfit version. Again, it's so cute and it's cheap, so, you know, I really hope that, you know, these promo pictures look good and I hope it is the same quality when I do get the figure in person. So now after that, we're going to be jumping into the next figure after Moichiro. And that is, of course, my current fixation, my JJK Husbando, uh, Toji Fushiguro and Jurei uh, Artifacts J by Kodokia. So he finally has a prototype. And I have to say, I really do quite dig the pose. I mean, it's quite action-y, I feel, and his facial expression is very menacing. It's very intimidating, which I do quite like. And yeah, so it's nice to see that we're getting a, you know, proper scale figure of Toji because pretty much all the other figures of him have been prize figures. And yeah, this is going to be on the cheaper side because it is an Artifacts J. But yeah, I like what I see with the sculpt and such, but I'm probably not going to pre-order this one because um, I am hoping that Eastream does a Toji scale and that might be my definitive figure of him. Um, I don't want to get a resin of him or anything because it's expensive and there really isn't any Toji resins I like extremely like, so, you know, but this is a good cheap alternative if you want a nice Toji scale figure. Next up, we have two new announcements for the Pokemon Artifacts J line of figures, again by Kotobukiya. So the first is the Haruto and Hogator, I think that's how you pronounce it, or, you know, Haruto and Foikoko. And then you have the other character right here with Sprigatito, I believe, yeah, Aoi and Nyahoja, or Sprigatito. So I'll just talk about them both together. Um, it's nice to see that we're getting more, um, like Arfex J Pokemon figures, and these of course are the Scarlet and Vine uh Scarlet and Violet trainer figures. Um as much as I would like to get the girl, you know, because she has like Sprigatito, I mean again, these are probably gonna be like under like a hundred, under a hundred USD figures. Um I will admit the Scarlet and Violet trainer designs aren't my favorite in the Pokemon series. Um I don't think they're bad, but compared to some of the other designs, they're not my favorites. But yeah. 
And these are actually illustrated by Hitoshi Ariga, who is one of my favorite uh, manga illustrators. He did the Mega Man, Mega Mix, and Giga Mix series, which are chef's kiss to me. So yeah, so he drew these characters and, you know, I do like what I see, but I'm not too sure. I honestly might just pick up Aoi. I'm not going to pick up uh, Haruto, just because, again, Spirigatito was my starter, and I really do like that Pokemon, so yeah. But nice to see we're getting new um, Pokemon figures. After that, we have another Kotobukiya figure, which stood out to me, which is the Guilty Gear Strive Bridget 17th with Return of the Killing Machine um, by Kotobukiya. So I know Guilty Gear is a fighting game, and Bridget recently had, you know, a whole bunch of figures announced and, you know, up for pre-order already. Which is nice to see that this character is getting some love. And I feel like this one really stands out just because of that little bear on a motorcycle and such. And yeah, I, you know, I will like the design of this one. Um, I haven't played Guilty Gear. I know, again, it's a fighting game. It's made by Arc System Works, who made Blaze Blue. But yeah, it's nice to see that this character is getting a heck of a lot more figures, so you all have, like, more options to choose from. After that, we have a My Dress Up Darling figure, which is the Kitagawa Marin uh, 1 6th Liz version by Alter. So yes, it's based off her, you know, Succubus cosplay. They're taking it straight from this illustration. And again, really like the sculpt on her. I really like the pose that she's kind of like turning around a little bit. So you have between this one and the Spirit Tail version, I might just pop it up right next to this one. Um, so you have those options on which version of Marin um, you want to pick up. Honestly, I'm like torn if I were to pick one. I don't think I'll pre-order any of the two of this version of Marin. Um, I do like the pose on this one. I think it's very cute. Um, but I really like the spare tail one and her face. The pose is also really cute and you can already see what she's going to come with. But yeah, I do like what I see, but you know. I'm probably going to skip that. I just wanted to point it out for, you know, the very nice design overall. Next up, we have an Azure Lane figure. This is the Cheshire 1 7th. So she kind of looks like this. Um, I think she just has a very cute character design with like this short, like sort of like dress, like maid outfit. It feels like a maid outfit. The, the headpiece definitely gives off that kind of vibe. Um, I don't know if this is going to come with um, her, like, artillery. I believe that Alter, they, they make like a light version where it's just the character by itself. And then they make like a, you know, deluxe version, I guess, with the alt artillery in the, for the background. Um, but I really love the sculpt and how she looks overall. She's super duper cute. Um, it's something about her facial expression, it feels like very like mischievous and playful, which I think is very cute. And I think you can even see like a little sculpted fang in this one. So yes, I... Ooh, I'll see how this one, I really like her design though. So I'll see what happens when she goes, um, yeah, for pre-order. I believe these Azure Lane figures by Alter, they do tend to go down in the aftermarket, so, you know, I'm, I'll probably just wait to maybe get her at a cheaper price if I want to. Gonna skip the next one. I'm saving that one for you know, possibly last. But next up, we have the painted version of the Twisted Wonderland Vil God Schoenheit. I'm sorry if I butchered that by Aniplex. So this is a um, Twisted Wonderland figure, and I feel like he might be like my favorite of the Twisted Wonderland figures I've seen. I feel like there's definitely a lot more to like his base, and you have that. I believe it's supposed to be a mirror in the background, like, he's supposed to be based off, like, the evil queen from Snow White. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, there was a point where I kind of was thinking, oh, I kind of want to collect these figures, um, but that has since changed because I do like the character designs. Um, they're illustrated by, uh, Yana Taboso, I believe, who is the creator of Black Butler. And, yeah, I appreciate the character designs. I know they're very, like, you know, handsome boys and such. Um, and these figures in the aftermarket, they they stay the same for the most part unless they come with like that exclusive like art card and such. But yeah, I really do like his design, but you know, since I stopped collecting those Twisted Wonderland figures, I'm gonna skip over him. After that, we're back into Fate. We have the 
FGO Arcade Merlin prototype, uh, 1 7th caster, again by Alter. So yes, this is, you know, there's the male, uh, the male Merlin figure and we have the female uh, version of Merlin. I really like the design overall. I like, again, the outfit, the staff, just the overall character design. It's a very, um, definitely not the most colorful figure. It definitely sticks to, you know, very select few colors, but, you know, I do like what I see, but I don't know. I don't know too much about Merlin, but, you know, I really like the character design, but for me, I'll probably skip pre-ordering her. The next one that got painted that I'm super excited about, of course, is the Toho Project uh, Romelia Scarlet 1 8 by Alter. Super duper impressive overall. Um, I'll probably do the close-ups first. But she just looks absolutely gorgeous. I love, you know, again, the sculpt of the dress, the face, her wings. They have kind of like a, a little bit of glossiness to it, like semi-gloss, I believe. Um, and yeah, she comes with her spear also for this one. Not sure if that's going to be default or they just want to show that off first because, um, yeah, they're, they're probably not going to pack it that way. They're probably going to give her this um, other set of hands. So it shows this image here, which is the other set of hands that she's supposed to come with. Um, I have to say, though, I do quite like her um, with her spear. And yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I will probably pre order this. It's it's probably stupid too. Um, I think I've seen the Flandre like still be the same aftermarket wise in terms of price, so I might just cave and order Vermilion. I hope she does come out at a reasonable time for me. So now I'm gonna be skipping the next two figures after Romelia and talking about quickly uh, Shooting Doji One Seventh Caster by Quest Q uh, was shown off again here at the Mega Hobby Expo. Really like what I see. Again, I like all the vibrant colors for this figure. Um, this form of Shuten Doji it doesn't change as she ascends. This is pretty much like her outfit, you know, from first to second to third to fourth ascension. So yeah. Um, but I really, again, I really like this design. Again, I wish I could get my hands on, you know, maybe I'll save up some money for the um, assassin version scale figure by Quez Q and there's also one by Max Factory. But those are just really expensive in the aftermarket, so I'm hoping that this one isn't awful in terms of pricing and all that. Um, but I would also like to get the assassin version of Shooten in the future. But yeah, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Interesting to see just the price for her and release date, because I would like to pick her up. You know, just in case the aftermarket um, value for her just shoots up. And now we're moving on to my top three favorite figures from this Mega Hobby Expo, and of course, they're all Fate figures, they're all made by Alter, or in this case, Altair, their, their male figure branch. So we're going to start off in no particular order with um, Arjuna, uh, 1 8th Berserker Alter version, again by Altair. He's finally painted, so I believe, yeah, okay, he was like seven months ago, so it does take Alter and Altair a while to color, at least it seems like these figures, um, but absolutely grand. Um, he does have his two, I guess they're cannons, or I'm not too sure exactly what they're called, um, but he looks absolutely fantastic. I believe this is the third ascension of Arjuna Altar, and he just looks super impressive overall. I really love, again, the gold, the blue. He just looks excellent. Um, interested to see what they're going to do with the base because it really, you know, it's just, you know, clear plastic again at the moment and he's just kind of floating. Um, the other thing that, you know, there are some things I worry about with this figure. First off, he does have those two big support rods that are supporting the cannons because they do kind of just float behind him in game. So, you know, that's inevitable that they have to use those. The other thing I worry about is the various spheres around him. So the one that he's kind of supposed to be like holding in his hand, like levitating, and the ones on the cannons. Um, hoping that they're like made of a light material and they're not like hollow on the inside because if you drop that on the floor, it's going to shatter into a million pieces. And we wouldn't want that. So I'm hoping that they're at least like light material at the same time they're actually like solid objects. And the other one is with the, 
it's kind of cut off. I might find a better picture. Um, but yeah, the yellow sphere that he has um, in his left hand, um, it looks like it's going to be attached to the cape. And I really hope that it has a good, like, hold there because I worried that that, you know, gravity is going to ma maybe make it fall out of, you know, it seems like, like the hole in his cape. I feel like that's where it's going to go. So that's what I kind of worry about. Again, with that sort of uh, sphere that he has, I do hope it's, again, lighter material so it doesn't fall out too easily. But yeah, super duper impressed. I am considering picking up this um, figure of Arjuna because I'm just, I'm blown away. He looks absolutely fantastic. Again, I'm, I'm feeling like at least 300 plus dollars for him and the next figure, which is the Karna um, Lancer by Altair, finally got colored. Um, so I'll quickly go to the prototypes. Yeah, this picture was uploaded a year ago, so it pretty much took him roughly a year to get colored and shown off at this figure festival. And all I can say is, again, he looks excellent. So. I believe this is the second Ascension version of Karna, and I really like what I see. I like the way they did his cape, it's very like flame-like, and the gold, excellent. He looks excellent. I really love his overall design, and yeah, oh, he, he just looks super impressive. It looks very clean so far in terms of paintwork and sculpt, and yeah. And I guess the one, the one big thing with this figure, though, is definitely um, the support rods. Um, you definitely have that one all the way in the back holding up that one piece of his cape. So that's just something to kind of, you know, if you don't like support rods, this might not be the figure for you. Plus, that's going to just take up some room again. Um, and I'm also interested to see what they're going to do for his base. And it also looks, um, even though this is like a clear plastic base, it looks ginormous so he's definitely gonna take up a lot of room um so yeah but uh, he just looks so good again alter they're just blowing me away with their fate figures at the moment um so yeah again interested to see when he comes out and you know price point and it might be pretty soon because he's finally painted so yeah looking forward to seeing when arjuna and karna get put up for pre-order and now, the very last figure I want to talk about is, you know, again, I talked about this in a previous figure festival, but so hyped that he has a prototype, and I feel like some people just skipped out on him. I've seen some other Mega Hobby Expo videos that people just skipped this one, but it was on Brewer Berries, so as a big, big fan and simp for this character, I'm going to talk about him, and that is, of course, the Oberon 1 8 Pretender by Altair and alter. <laughs> so, yes, Oberon is probably my favorite FGO character. Um, FGO has Bondo. Um, I really love his design and just like his personality. He's just an overall very interesting character. And again, I was hyped for this one um, when, you know, it was announced and then I saw the prototype and I just freaking lost my mind. But this is awesome. I really like what I see with him in this paint, uh, this unpainted prototype. <sighs> I wish some of the pictures were a hell of a lot better though. Um, but yeah, the detail on him, the sculpt work is top tier. I absolutely love his hair sculpt, his outfit sculpt, his crown, his wings. I just, uh, this is like the definitive Oberon figure for me. Um, and the base, I think, is excellent, too. I like the, you know, the tree he's sitting on. You even have under his cape, they even included, like, Blanca underneath there. I think that's supposed to be Blanca, the little moth companion that he's supposed to come with. But he's excellent. I'm... This is... I don't know. I, I'm at a loss for words. I love Oberon so much. Um, and I do have him FGO. He is currently my most leveled servant. I do plan on grailing him. The only thing is I have to get him to 3rd Ascension, which unfortunately I'm not at that part of the game um, to ascend him. <sighs> but, like, th this figure is for me an instant, instant holy grail figure. Um, I'm most likely going to pre-order this, even though his price is going to be probably very absurd. But I love him that much, and I really want him as soon as possible. 
I don't know how he's going to be in the aftermarket and I'm not going to take that risk. So yes. Uh, again, I, I love his design. Again, it is supposed to be the you know, third ascension. Um, I really love the color scheme for that design. And I'm just very excited to see this, you know, painted in the very distant future. Again, if anything, you know, to go off from the Karna figure, the prototype was shown off a year ago. So he might get the same treatment. I don't know, because he might be, you know, popular enough that Alter is gonna, you know, they're gonna paint him quicker, which I hope is the case, because I really want him as soon as possible. But we cannot rush perfection. So yes, I love Oberon. And, um,. Instant pre-order. I'm just gonna say this right now. He's an instant pre-order for me. But yeah, that overall concludes my Mega Hobby Expo 2023. It's showtime. So yes, again, Alter, they have stolen my heart. They have stolen my wallet for this uh, Mega Hobby Expo. So many excellent announcements. And yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, pretty much like a good chunk of these be, you know, painted because, you know, a good chunk of them were unpainted. So yeah, just so many so many exciting announcements, especially because, you know, I'm getting into the Fate series. I really loved the Fate announcements from this Mega Hobby Expo. So that overall concludes this video for these two figure festivals. i um, interested to see what your guys' highlights were, you know, that were either on my list or not on my list. So yeah, um, definitely a lot of very nice announcements and, you know, a lot that I'm very, very excited for overall. I mean, you can probably tell from how giddy I got. So yeah, overall, pretty good figure expos. I really did enjoy, like, what I saw from them. Now we're kind of moving on to personal life update. So I actually got a full-time job. So in the past, I had a part-time job, but I've since kind of leveled up from there. Um, and got a full-time job, so it's probably gonna be like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday, you know, the usual typical full-time job schedule. Um, so I really only have time to upload, or, you know, not so much upload, but just record on, you know, the weekends. And, you know, hopefully, like, I get all this sort of, like, on-camera stuff done in one day with minimal distractions. Again, I live with, um... My family so it can be just a big pain in the ass because you know they're you know distractions and you know just the walking I don't know if anyone could ever hear people walking behind me in my videos um it just it's a pain in the butt um so that's you know something I have to really take into consideration um so yeah that's just gonna how it's gonna have to be I'm probably gonna upload then every other week or sometimes like every three weeks that's just of course the way it has to be, um, you know, with work and just, you know, fatigue in general and how much I can get done um, in one sitting in a day. So there's that. Um, so I'm going to, you know, of course, try and maybe do like smaller kind of videos, like videos like these, or I was thinking of doing like a tier list, a figure tier list video of the figures in my collection. I know Gwen collects, she did one recently, but it's kind of a much more like chill, talky kind of video. Um, doesn't really require too much editing or having to put b-roll up um so yeah i might do something like that in the future but if you guys have any like sort of smaller suggestions maybe um leave them in the comments um i guess the one kind of video i'm not too sure about doing is like um my you know where to buy your anime figures or tips and tricks and hacks um that's just something i'm not too well versed in so i probably won't be doing something like that um, I guess room tour is also kind of another one that I'm probably not going to do um, for quite a long time. Um, but if you have any like other suggestions besides those two, then you know feel free to leave them in the comments as well. And you know the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about and has just been kind of on my mind is just um, my art. So you know I haven't really had the time to do like um, full colored illustrations like digitally and such and there's just been like some projects I wanted to do that I haven't really had the time to do and you know I kind of want to go back and focus on like making art for myself um I am very grateful for the people on Patreon who you know paid money uh for my top tier to get art made and you know also for my 500 subs uh Ninja Red giveaway I'm very grateful that uh the winner really enjoyed the piece I'm glad that you know I can make those ha people happy with my art uh, but I just kind of want to take the time to just kind of like make art for myself. I feel like 
I like I you know I kind of want to just be like blunt I feel like I'm thinking oh I sound selfish um, I'm kind of just self-conscious about that um, but it's just like something that's been on my mind it just is like obviously art has been like another source of like happiness for me besides obviously you know just being myself on camera for YouTube um, and you know I've been again sketching and doodling again but I just want to get back into just like making nice um, you know, art for myself of like my favorite characters and such because, you know, again, it's just like a passion that I've had and I just feel like I have to just time manage a little bit better so that's why I kind of want to do the every other week upload so I have the time, you know, to also do art while I do YouTube and such. Um, it's definitely going to be tricky, um, but I just have to learn to, you know, manage my time better with things and, you know, try and get what I want to get done at like certain times and yeah so <laughs> that's just um just something that's also just brought me down a little bit um just not being able to make art for myself and the last thing that I'm gonna do is I think I actually did this a few days ago but I decided to close down my patreon for the time being uh just because I have been doing an awful job with uploading stuff onto there and since I have that full-time job, I just rather have that be like my main source of income. Plus, if you are a creator on Patreon, um, the thing they do is they do, um, you know, take, you know, money out, like fees, there's Patreon fees if you're a creator. So I just kind of want to not have to worry about those things. But again, I am grateful overall for the people who took the time to donate to my Patreon. Who knows, I might decide to um, upload it um, onto there again in the future. Uh, but at the moment, I'm, you know, fine with just having the full-time job being, like, my main source of income. So, yes, that's overall just, like, the big sort of life updates and just stuff that's just been going through my head. I just want to be, of course, you know, open and honest with things, um, you know, on camera. And again, you know, I do enjoy doing this YouTube channel. Um, obviously, I don't want this to be a full-time thing. This is just a side thing I like to do just to kind of just be able to express myself and feel comfortable with other people who have the same interests as me. Um, and I'm very grateful for everyone's overall support and kindness, whether it be in comments and likes and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, those are just like, you know, my overall thoughts with things. Um, you know, some things have just got me a little bit down, but I'm hoping to just, you know, time manage myself a little bit more just so I can get things done on time and such. And, you know, just being able to, of course, create more art for myself, um, just to, you know, have that other source of, like, happiness, uh, which I think is very important, um, to have a hobby or something that just brings you joy in your life when things just get very overwhelming and stressful. So I hope you all have something like that in your life, um, because I feel like we all definitely need something like that. So yeah, kind of a sappy way to end it, um, but I do hope you all, you know, enjoyed this video, um, and, you know, if you feel like it, feel free to subscribe to my channel and, you know, turn on the notification bell um, to be notified on what other sort of figure or merch shenanigans I get into. And yes, I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are, and take it easy. Goodbye.